Two months had passed, and the engines had gotten used to the grouping act. However, Mr. Lance was still finding it troublesome to adjust to. He often found himself mixing up the other engine's schedules, which was often confusing for the engines. Therefore, head office had decided to appoint him an assistant manager. His name was Mr. Maud. The engines found it hard to trust him, as they didn't know much about him, and he didn't reveal much about his past. One morning, Mr. Lance and Mr. Maud both arrived at the sheds to give the engines their day's work. Alright engines, listen up. Today is a very busy day. Pendragon, you shall be on passenger work, alongside Abedonian. Then, Lethbridge, you shall be on suburban services. Alexander, you shall be shunting in the yard. Allenby, it's the goods trains for you. I really wish you would start to learn our nicknames instead of our full names. Oi, I want to hear no back talk from you, Abedonian. <sighs> I don't get paid enough for this. You don't get paid at all, Aberdeen. Pan had been given the first express train of the day. He heard the guard's whistle, and he was soon able to depart on time. Pan arrived at Sandsworth on time. However, he was surprised to see Aberdeen in the shed. Hmm. I wonder what Aberdeen's doing down here. He usually has the Up Express. He soon found out when he himself was called over to the sheds and another engine took the Express on to Scotland. Ah, Pendragon. Good to see you have made it. Now that you have, I want to get down to business. That business being what, sir? Well, I wanted to talk to you about two things. The first being shed allocations. First off, Aberdeen, you will no longer be stationed at Lowfell Sheds. Instead, you will be stationed at Aberdeen Sheds. Excuse me, sir? Indeed. It makes no sense for you to travel all the way back to Lowfell when you could just finish your day at Aberdeen. Now, doesn't that make more sense to you? I mean, yeah, I guess. But, sir, you mentioned something else you had. What exactly was that? Ah, oh, yes. Well, that other thing involves number 9611, Allenby. You see, he is going to be withdrawn, sir. Yes, you see, you have become too much of a burden on this railway. 
I looked at the finances last week, and it seems most of the money goes to your repairs, Allenby. Now, don't you think that says something? Mr. Lance, you can't be serious. You know how long I've worked here. Come on, can't you do anything? Listen, Alan, I want to do something. Believe me, I do. But I can't. You see, it looks like Mr. Mott has kind of made his final decision. Yes, I have had more years managing railways than Mr. Lance here ever will. Yeah. Alright, sirs. I understand. I still can't believe it. This is absolutely ridiculous. I know. It's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. You're not even that old yet. Yeah. I thank you a lot. But at the end of the day, this is our fate. All of us here today. At some point, we will be scrapped. Well, I don't think you're going anywhere anytime soon. The engines all looked at Pan. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, he just made this announcement out of nowhere. Now, how do we know that in reality, he's not making this decision on his own? Remember, he has to have the consent of the LNER. Hang on a minute. That's actually not a bad point, Pen. I never thought of that, actually. Pen, since you have the Express tomorrow, when you go to Aberdeen, if you see any figures of the LNER there, make sure to ask them if this was cleared with them, alright? Yep, I definitely will. I can't have my best friend go away this quickly. One by one, the engines all fell asleep confident in their plan. The next morning, Penn left early with his express train.
the station, and there he saw the man he needed to see. Ah, Penn, how are you? You seem to be in a bit of a rush. I kind of am, sir. See, I wanted to ask, did Mr. Maud clear Alan's withdrawal? It was something we were talking about last night, and... Wait, what did you just say? Mr. Maud? Hang on a minute. Where is he? What? Where is he? Mate, if this is the last time I talk to you... I really just want to apologize again for how I teased you back in 1922. It was wrong of me. Oh, don't worry about that. That's all water under the bridge. However, just then, the two engines heard a commotion coming from the station. <laughs> Can't believe it. We caught THE John Alexander. The criminal of the railways. Can't believe we've done it. After four years. So, sir, I'm curious. Who exactly is this John Alexander guy? Well, you see, Pen. Four years ago, weird things started happening around the railways. These were acts of sabotage. The man behind it was John Alexander. However, no one's actually been able to catch him until now. And a good thing too. We can't have criminals running around the Rossworth Vale now, can we? No, we can't. So, does this mean I can actually stay on the railway? I'm not being withdrawn or sent for scrap? Alan. Yes indeed. You are staying on the railway. I have no intentions of getting rid of you anytime soon, old boy. Oh, sir. Thank you, sir. You have no idea how happy that makes me. The engines were all glad Alan wasn't leaving. They were also glad that Mr. John Alexander had been caught. However, who says that's the last time we'll ever see him? Hello there, you must be new around here. Yes indeed, my name's Clan McKinnon. Are you a resident engineer around here? Well, uh, starting today I am. I'll come and visit from time to time, but the manager here decided to purchase me for full time. Oh, I see. Nice to meet you. Um, you can call me Bradford. Nice to meet you, McKinnon. Nice to meet you too, Bradford. <laughs> 